Hello and welcome to Next Up Social. We are your hosts, Richelli Wright, Juan Buford, and Nina Payne. We believe entrepreneurship is empowerment and we are committed to the development and progress of entrepreneurs, providing you with information that you need to build thriving businesses. Today, we are very pleased to welcome Latresa Rice, mindset coach, motivational speaker, author, and much, much more, which I'm sure I'm excited to find out about. So, Latresa, we are very excited to have you here at Next Up Social. Thank you again for joining us. Let's dive in. Tell us about yourself, your background, and how you got started with entrepreneurship. Excellent. I'll definitely do that. But in order to do that, I got to take you back. So, imagine being seven years old and your mother dying. You were told that she died from pneumonia, but later you discover that she died from AIDS. I am Latresa Rice. That's my story. So after my mother passed from uh, AIDS, my grandmother raised me and two of my siblings. And I remember going through things and, you know, you want the latest and greatest, but she was a single, you know, single parent, grandmother raising the children of her deceased daughter and she's doing the best that she could do and I remember everybody in my school had Nikes and I said grandma I want some Nikes she said well you have to figure out what ability what skills you have and get your own Nikes because my budget say pay less (laughs) And and I remember hearing that I'm like okay but everybody's they got Nikes in my school. <laughs> they got all this stuff going on. What can I do? And what she said was, you know, you're a good writer. Maybe you can write some poems for people. Maybe you, she said, I see you drawing all the time. You're, you're a good artist. Maybe you can draw pictures. So I started drawing pictures. I sold the pictures for 25 cents up to $3, depending on how big the people wanted it. And then she started buying supplies. So my grandmother would go and whatever we were engaged in, we were, she allowed us to be as creative as we wanted to. I, I wanted to design t-shirts. So she went and got some rhinestones and she got, bought some t-shirts. She said, I'll buy your first set. But after that, you better figure out how to buy your own supplies for your little business. <laughs> so, so I gotta do it. And for me, that was the first step in entrepreneurship. If you desire something, what she showed me from that is if it's something you desire, it is not my responsibility to fulfill your desires. It is your responsibility to see what gifts and talents God has given you and use them so that you can get what you desire legally. Because <laughs> she, she said, I'm not visiting any of you all in jail. I'm not going to do it. I won't write you. So you need to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I, lo- I love and miss my grandmother, but that was my first step in entrepreneurship. Awesome. Wow. Okay. That is probably one of the most unique origination stories I've ever heard in life. (laughs) The desire to buy Nikes motivated you to start your entrepreneurship journey. I love it. I love it. So, (laughs) So I know that the backstory, the story behind the story and your mother's passing as a result of contracting HIV, Mm-hmm. Um, and the impact that it had on you inspired you to begin to tell your story. And that in turn inspired you to help other people um, begin to tell theirs. And that's, that was kind of like your foray into the publishing industry. Right. Um, you know, I'm going to step back from that and allow you to, that's, you know, seat the ground of you to tell that story. I guess for me, one of the reasons why I was excited for this interview is I've thought about publishing on numerous occasions. Like I have several books that have already been written and, you know, the industry has changed so much over the last 20 years, so much, and particularly over the last five years. And I, 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 even to this day, I just find myself sitting back thinking, okay, so what do you do? You self-published, you hire an agent, you have a million different outlets um, online where you can actually publish through these organizations and these outlets. I know other people are doing old school. They're just literally going to print and, you know, you know, a whole master P right out the trunk, <laughs> you know, there's so many different options. Um, what, what does your foray into it look like? And I guess, tell us a little bit about as you're helping other individuals, what does that look like? Okay. So my foray into it, if you will, and I go back to the first book, because so far I've published four. When I go back to the first book, I couldn't even think of it as I was writing a book. Okay. I had to think of it as uh, it's only three sentences per day because hmm. the thought of writing a book caused, would cause me to stop writing. 
because I had never written a book before. And sometimes what I notice is people who desire to write a book, it can be intimidating. And what you don't want is the intimidation to cause you to not produce what God has placed in your heart to produce because there's somebody waiting for the story that only you can provide. So I put the dash mark on my calendar, three sentences. So every day I will write my three sentences. And as I wrote the three sentences, I will check it off. Now, typically I find myself writing more than three sentences. However, my goal was the three. I made sure that the goal was small enough that in my mind it would trigger, that's all it is. It's just three sentences per day. Why, why did you do that today? That's it. You know? <laughs> so that way it would push me in that direction. Now, one of the things that I found myself doing because I knew the type of book that I was writing, Gate to Life, You Choose the Life You Shall Experience. That is my autobiography. That is the book where I'm describing my experiences being considered an AIDS orphan, things that I dealt with and how I overcame them to live a prosperous life. So I'm talking about the molestation. I'm, I'm talking about my mom's death. I'm talking about um, seeing my dad and someone who um, I knew, who I thought was my uncle engaged in a sexual act and how I linked the two things together. I'm describing those things in this book. And some of the stuff in the book was very hard. When people are writing their stories, and that's what I'm doing through World Clarity View, helping people write those type of stories. If they're writing these stories, I know that it can be hard. You're going to need an accountability partner. So because I knew I was going to need an accountability partner and I knew what the purpose for that book was, the purpose was to reach another youth who's had hard times and show them that the choices that they make or have, have gates attached to them that open different opportunities for them, depending on what choices they make. And you can choose a different opportunity and go a different way. One of the things that my grandmother consistently said was, if you don't change, if you don't get this anger together, because I was a very angry youth. You don't get this anger together, you're going to be dead or in jail. You, you have to mm. figure this thing out, mm. right? And, and so she pushed me into writing. She would buy journals. I, I need you to write how you're feeling. So that's another aspect of what I'm working with people on. Dealing with the depression, dealing with the anger, uh, rage, things that you, because sometimes when we pack down our emotions and we don't allow them an opportunity to be released through tears, it comes out in other ways. Yeah. It comes out as aggression. You know, it comes out in irritability, all those type of things. And so writing is an a, a way for people to exercise the authority that's been given to them by writing their story. So that is where my take on it is. That's some of my background and how I started writing was simply, I started out writing poems. And then uh, in high school, because again, I remember graduation, there was this fee that I was shocked. Because I think, oh, I got all these A's and I got a scholarship waiting on me. Surely I'm just about to walk across this stage. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> There's a fee attached <laughs> to you graduating. And when I went to my grandmother about it, she said, well, I don't have that. Because <laughs> again, she's raising all these different kids and it wasn't just us. She was raising other youth, helping out. I don't have that. You're going to have to figure something out. Mm. You're going to college, but I can't afford to send you. So you're going to have to figure something out. What can you do to get there legally? <laughs> so, oh, wow. And again, she always stressed the legally. So I <laughs> spoke to people who were there. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. You need me? Okay. <laughs> so I spoke to people who were there. Who, who did I know that actually graduated college? Well, I didn't know anybody in my family, but I knew teachers and counselors. So I went to them to ask them, what did you do to make it to where you are? When wow. you're talking about helping somebody write a book, they really need to be speaking to somebody who's already done it, who's walked that road that you want to walk. And that is something that I learned from that process. So I wind up creating surprising gifts and creations was my high school business. So I created that. I would go to the different classrooms. Some teachers would buy my poems. They would, um, and I would make personalized poems for people. So they would tell me a little bit of something about the person they want to give the poem to. And I'll design it for $3. If they wanted me to deliver it, it was five. You know, put it in the frame, that's $10. You know, those type of things. And I raised enough money so that I was able to pay my senior dues. I was able to pay for prom. I was able to pay for my first semester of books in college. Those type of things. So I learned, okay, if this, again, that goes back to that lesson. Who do I speak to that's been where I desire to go? And how did you get there? What things did you run into? Okay, let me avoid those things and let me do the things that you're telling me I need to do. And I saw results. So with Royal Clarity View, which is my mindset coaching slash 
private practice. I help people who have lost hope because they lost a loved one. I help them regain hope by rediscovering who they are, the royal aspect of them, and healing through writing and publishing their story. Okay. Um, love you, man. Your spirit is just <laughs> amazing and free and positive. Thank you. I, I love it. Um, I have some questions because, yes. you know, it's not as automatic as I think entrepreneurs try to make it in the beginning because you've done this thing and you've told this story so many times. And so I want to find out, like, your your grandmother, I wish she was my grandmother. She sounds like somebody who is an major uh-huh. influence in your life. Um, th- so does she have a business of her own? Or these are just things that she told you about? No, I found out that she did. I found out after the fact. You know, grandmother, she was very, I don't want to say secretive. It was, if you ask me the question, I'll answer that. She Uh, can't give you any more. Of privacy. Back (laughs) in the the day, they were private. And what happened in the house stayed in the house. It was a whole thing for a culture of ours. I get that. And so you found out she she had a business? She did. She owned a grocery store. She owned a grocery store. And what she said was black bottom in the oh. city. Yeah, <laughs> right. And when uh-huh. they put it in the freeway, her grocery store was taken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so from there, she just went on ahead and worked. She, you know, she got a job. She said, I couldn't dwell on that. I got a job with U of M and I worked for 32 years in the hospital. And so that's what, that's what her path was. But it's so interesting because it sounds like her 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 destiny, if you will, or fate was to have a business and know enough about it to be able to give that information to the children and people that she was connected to. So does your other siblings also get this bug where they are? Are they entrepreneurs as well? Yes, my brother is in IT. So he has his own little business with IT. You know, little, uh, well, I don't want to say little, his own business with IT. My sister is a, co- a licensed cosmetologist. So she just, you know, she works and does hair. We've all had some, grandma always pushed us in our gifts and abilities. So I do love that about her. She looked at what you uniquely could do and encouraged right. you in that area. So, so did you have like a corporate job or like a regular job or were you always, Days in the you know entrepreneurial hustle mindset like did you no I do I'm, I'm a director at a university at the University of Michigan I'm a director there I'm an assistant director over the department but at the same time I also have other things that I'm doing that's in my passion wow and I made sure that even if I'm working in corporate I'm doing something that I'm passionate about because I like to give my all to whatever I'm doing so each of my corporate positions have worked with youth in some kind of way, empowering them, even my current position where I'm working with uh, college students and I'm working with those from middle school to high school, helping them to excel. So I want to switch gears a little bit because I'm not going to let you get off of here about answering a couple of <laughs> technical questions. Okay. <laughs> so for the individual, let's say hypothetically, they just pop up out of thin air and they've already written the book, they have the outline, they start receiving some guidance and the editorial support from you. And it's time to actually publish the book, right? What does that process look like? Well, they reach out to me. If they desire to self-publish, I walk them through the entire self-publishing process. And I want to hear it. Like, what's the process? So I want to yeah. self-publish. What, what does that look you like? You want to self-publish? Let's go. Yeah. So we're going to set right. up a meeting. You and I are going to meet. I'm going to walk you through how to upload your document into the site. I'm going to walk you through how to actually get your your book cover, your art done. Make What site? Hmm? What site? What site would you recommend or what site do you use to help people? Oh, for me, I'm using KDP. I like KDP. Right. But I also tell them about getting their own. You have to make sure that you get your own ISBN. So I walk people how to get those. Once you get your own ISBN, then it's published under your name. But if you don't get that. So let me ask, because I know what ISBN means, but I know people who are listening may not. So when you say ISBN, what is that? It's, it's like, let's just make it simple. It's like your social security number for your book. Mm, okay. I like, I like that. I like that. That's the first time I heard someone explain it like that. Okay. All right. I love that. 
so I so I upload my content. You work with me to get my ISBN number. Mm -hmm. So now I can uh, technically speaking, I can start earning some money, but it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. No, Rick, but it's not that easy. So what happens no. next? I want to show you how to build your email list. We got to build because the goal is to go bestseller, right? That's our goal. Yep. So we get out there. So we need to build our email list, at least 5,000 to 10,000 emails. So I'm going to show you how to do that. One aspect is going live. Now, if I have somebody that's nervous about going live, then we'll look at some other things. So I try and tailor it to the person I'm working with, but we got to build that email list. Because what you want is you want to set a specific day and time in which you're releasing your book, right? right? And then you want to drive everybody to go buy it at that specific date and time, which is going to kick you up on the Amazon bestseller list because all of this traffic ah, is coming in at one time, right? <laughs> I see what you know. Okay. Now, okay. So, okay. So I upload my book. Mm -hmm. We're going to start building the email list, but yeah. like... Rochelle would tell you, you don't want me designing anything digital. It will look like a third grader did. So, <laughs> so what does that process look like in terms of, you know, I hear people talk about cover art and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Like, how does that work? Well, in that case, if you're not designing it, then we got to pay somebody to do it. Okay. So then I can show you how to find someone who is very reasonable, depending on your budget, or I can show you how to use Canvas. So it depends on the person. If the person uh, is saying, hey, I don't want it, I don't want to pay nobody else to do it. I want to learn how to do it. Then I walk them through how to do it. If okay. they want to pay somebody that is an expert in that area and they are working on a budget, then I'll show you different people that you can pay within your budget and still get the task done. So that's through the From Thought to Plan uh, program that I offer. From Thought to Plan, that's, we got a three hour intensive workshop when I'm walking them through how to copyright that book, who do they contact for editing? Um, in that particular workshop, we're going to actually map out some marketing, uh, depending on what that person, their skill set is. So we're going to map out your marketing. There's three group workshops that even follow that, that they get to part, bounce ideas off of other people. It also serves as an accountability piece. And those people who go through the From Thought to Plan program are also added to a Facebook group that I have where they can continue to receive um, accountability, information on marketing and all those things in that group. I like it. So, okay. So I That's got my, I got, <laughs> I got, I, so I got the artwork. Yes. I uploaded, you helped me get my ISBN and this whole build an email list thing is, is, is interesting to me. So I've built my own email list using a particular strategy. But I know my strategy was very rudimentary, like blunt object. <laughs> Took me a while, but I did it. What's the what's the effective way in which you're helping people do that? What does that look like? Well, you have to start a funnel. So if you're using Mailchimp, you can create a opt-in, and whenever you're speaking about the topic in your book, you'll just put that link in your caption area so people can click on it, and you're going to direct them to click that link once they register. Now you're able to send them the uh, blast as soon as you get ready to release that book. At least two weeks before, you want to start sending them blasts. Hey, it's coming up this date. And another thing that I do is I encourage the people that I'm working with to offer some sort of gift with that opt-in. So are you, were they those who buy the book during the first release, are they getting a bookmark? Are they getting a planner? What's related to your book that you can offer them as a gift for being the first to purchase that book. So we're looking at how to strategically launch. Wait a minute, so you just said, I, I feel like such a Neanderthal right now that I never thought to do this. So you're literally just having people post and talk about the content in their book. Yes. I mean, but this approach could be across any type of business endeavor. Absolutely. Every now and again, you do a post and instead of saying, you know, everyone says hit the like button and you know, share, et cetera. But instead, your call to action is, look, opt in to my email list mm -hmm. and I'll give you updates about the book and goodies and gifts and all this other fun stuff. Like, like this is going to be the plug. This is how you get to it first if you're really interested in the content. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe I never thought about doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay, so you have this content that you're putting out. You're plugging 
people opt in. Mm -hmm. You're building the email list. Yes. Along the way, you're kind of dropping hints that, you know, there's going to be goodies. So there's going to be Absolutely. something you're going to get for being the first. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So I heard about this game that people play with the bestseller list. Mm -hmm. Right. Where books can be bestsellers for two seconds and then they call themselves bestsellers. And then they don't sell anything after that. But they, they claim they can get it for two seconds. So that means they're a bestseller. Right. <laughs> So you have people who have that claim, they really haven't moved any product. They really haven't moved any books. So I want to hear about your approach where someone who legitimately they publish a book, they just don't want to get the bestseller for two minutes and then run around calling themselves mm -hmm. a bestseller, but they really want to, because what I hear, I mean, you got to move a lot of books. You got to move a, lot, a large volume of books really for the money to start making a difference in the budget. Absolutely. Like, what does that process look like? How are you helping people navigate that? Like, what should someone be taking aim at in terms of how many books they actually need to have in circulation? And like, how do you how do you deal with that algorithm on Amazon or anywhere else people sell the book? Well, you got to keep in mind that one book has over seven to twelve streams, and so what I'm typically telling people is it's time to activate the other streams that is going to also cause people to go buy the book. So, whatever book, let's say chapter one, you talked about um overcoming depression right yeah. that's a workshop you can partner uh, with some uh agencies like a mental health agency and you can come in and do a presentation and part of the uh, presentation if you don't want to charge them is they buy your book well now you've just sold <laughs> a nice good. amount of books <laughs> and you deliver a presentation they can have you come back for repeat business so you're continuously promoting your book in a different avenue right? Mm -hmm. Some people also, because if you're writing, you can create a play from your book and you create a play from your book. You have the book in your play some kind of way. And now you're selling book sales from the people who come and watch that play. They're purchasing the book. So uh, tapping into the other avenues that are attached to your book is going to increase the amount of sales that you get from that book, not to mention your visibility. Uh, one of the things that I've done is Gate to Life has been in a movie. It's been in a movie, it's been in a play. So even if I didn't write the movie or didn't write the play, I'm, I tap into some of the Facebook uh, playwright organizations and I'll look and see who's writing a play. Okay, what's the, pet, what's the cost for me to have my book advertised in their play? Okay, it's $150. I'm going to pay and send them a copy of the book. And now everybody that sees that play is confronted with my book. Right. So you got to think outside of the box. How do I get the message out? Because ultimately it's about the person that you wrote that book to reach. And if you're not getting the message out, then they can't receive it. And they're still stuck in the same situation they were in before you started writing the book. Your story is not even about you. It's about those who you've been called to impact, the lives you've been called to impact. And if you don't publicize it, then they don't know it's available and they can't get the solutions that you are the one that's called to give them. Okay. So I'm not going to have you give away all of the sauce, but I want one more. Because I, I, you have no idea how, I, like, I'm excited about this, but a little bit annoyed at the same time. Because about 10 years ago, I matriculated, I told you about this. I paid to go through somebody's program and you've given me more during this, then I got after spending four figures of a comma, you know, of a comma. Gotcha. <laughs> so just, just, you know, give our audience one more because I'm, I would have never thought to do that. That's interesting. Okay. So one more, one more, yes. one more, one more, thing. one more string. One more thing that I encourage people to do is join Facebook groups that are related to things in your book and be active in those groups. So that on those free days, because some of them have free promotion Fridays, and those are the days in which I'll share information about my book, or I might share a video that I posted that has the plug in there about the email list. Well, this group has 10,000 people in it. When I share my video to that group, and I've been active in that group, and I'm following the group rules, they allow it to be on the page. And now I got new people from a group that I never would even encounter join opted into my email list and it's just growing so that's one thing and when you do that video i'll share it to like 20 20 to 30 groups one time i shared my video that uh it was 99 different groups that i had joined so i shared the video wow. there 
So now I got all these people looking at my content. That's how it is. But wow. yeah, using social media to your benefit. Mm-hmm. So Latrisa, when I'm listening to you, you and I are one in the same, right? You are a marketer. That's like in so much oh, of yeah. what you're doing. Like you're, you're so many other things, but especially in what you're doing with uh, the other authors that you're working with is you're teaching them marketing, right? And how to repurpose the, the one piece, the big piece of content that they created to keep them sustaining after that book has launched. And that's such like uh, a unique skill set already, right? To have. And so, but what I love hearing about as well as when you're talking about this are all some of the specifics and different ways that you do it. But you've been writing for a long time and Facebook groups and all these other things, they didn't, you know, email funnels like that didn't always exist, right? Mm-hmm. And or they've evolved over the time. So I'd love to hear about kind of your journey into learning a little bit on how to do a lot of this, because as an entrepreneur, we have to wear all the hats and you're teaching these other author entrepreneurs how to do this. And I think so much of what you do just taps into, I think of being an, an if, if, I, if I, my skill is an author, that's one of the hardest entrepreneurial journeys I think <laughs> that you're going to have, right? So yeah. how do you continue to with your motivational work, right? You have to keep motivating these authors to keep going at what they're doing. So I'd love to hear about like that journey of like how you learned how to push, get these in front of the right eyes and keep others motivated to do the same. The beginning step was very difficult. I I gotta go all the way back to the first book for the beginning because that's when I first actually stepped into uh, being an author. Gate to life. When I, I remember when I first told my grandmother that grandma, I'm writing this book. I'm gonna write a book about my story. And she was like, What? Writing a book? You're too young. You I autobiography. You haven't lived enough. You haven't had enough experiences. And I'm like, no, in my prayer time, I know God told me to write this book. I'm gonna write this book. Grandma, you just wait. It's gonna be published. And she was like, Yeah, okay. Nobody gonna buy that book. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went back and I wrote the book. And so after it was published, I went to her. I said, look, grandma, my book is published. She said, you did it. Give me five copies. I got to be the first person to buy a copy of your book. And I want five of them. I said, but grandma, I can give you a copy. She said, no, because when you develop something, people should invest in you. I'm your first investor. I want five copies. Oh, grandma. (laughs) So she paid. She said, what's the full price? Don't give me no discount because it's worthy of the, you're worthy of the investment. I don't want a discount. Full price. I'm like, okay, so I gave the full price. And so she paid over that. And that I would never forget because she was the first person to say, nobody gonna do it. Had I, had I actually took that negative and did not write the book, then mm-hmm. I couldn't have received the other thing that came from persevering. A lot of times when people step into entrepreneurship, and someone says to them, you're not going to make it. That business is not going to do this. They just stop right there and say, well, if the person that I love the most doesn't believe in me, why should I do it? Or if my family members aren't purchasing my item, then I probably should just quit. But no, that should be more fuel for you to say, you know what? Watch me <laughs> because I'm going to get it done because it's not about you. It's about these other people I got to reach. And when you do that, now, I had an uncle publish a book. After stepping out there, I got other people that are stepping out and doing the same thing that previously they probably were afraid to do, right? So if I'm looking at that aspect, and I, well, please let me know, Rochelle, if I don't answer your question. No, I'm loving it. You're good. <laughs> but when I look at that, and it was the beginning stages, I didn't know anything about marketing. All I knew is I wanted to have a strategic launch. So Mm -hmm. I went on the calendar and I said, what is my book about? Okay, my book is about African-Americans. The book is about AIDS orphans. My book is about us. Okay, so let me research what month is National AIDS Awareness Day or what month is Black AIDS Awareness Day? And so I saw it was February, February 7th. Okay, Mm -hmm. because National, the World AIDS is in December, December 1st. So I said, okay, February 7th. So that's the date for my book release. Okay, mm. how am I going to, when I set that date, 
and I made sure we're strategically on the same day, because if you put it on a day of a national holiday, you have an increase of being able to get more news stations and radio stations and all those type of people to publicize your event. Right? But, but, I mean, how did you know that, Latrice? How did you know, not having any marketing background, how did you know, and I know you said you wanted to have a strategic release, but saying it and then being able to execute are two different things. Like, did you research it? I researched it. Okay. I researched it. Th that's something that my grandmother always told us too. If you want to know something, you got to figure it out. You have to learn how to find the information because you're the one that wants to know it, not me. Right? That's what, that was her thing. So because I wanted to know it, I had to go do the research. Yeah, so I yeah. put on Google, I went to Google and I typed in national holidays. Right. And so it brought out this whole list of all these national. I didn't even know there was a national pie day and all, like, all this list of all these national holidays. And I found the one that closely re was related to my book, which is something I'm teaching those who I'm working with. Find the one that's closely related to my book. I said, OK, so I'm going to have my book release on this day so then I can send some press releases out to people. Now, in undergrad, the second component of my bachelor's degree is communications. Um, and it's in the public relations corporate business track. Yes, that helps. <laughs> the first one was psychology. So I was familiar with writing press releases and things like that before the release of Gate to Life. Got you. But after yeah, I've done sense. that, <laughs> after I did that, I said, okay, I don't want a traditional release. I want actors. <laughs> so <laughs> people came to my book release party and it was an event. I had... Uh, someone acted like Grandma Kelly from the book. Someone acted like the principal from the book. Someone acted like my mother in the book. And then there was someone who acted like, um, who was the other person? Oh my goodness, it's four different people. But they did monologues. I had a young lady write the monologues for me. So she wow. wrote the monologues. And these were, quite a few of them were people from my church and then two were from my family that actually acted these things out. We had a stage, right? And then I came out at the end and I delivered a speech about AIDS awareness and protection, right? So they got this room filled with about a hundred people. So we got a room filled with all these people. I have a table in the back where people are purchasing my books. And then I have vendors, cause that's another avenue of income cause you need to recoup the cost. <laughs> Publishing your book, there's expense, there's a cost involved in that. So then I have vendors here that are paying for vendor tables and I make sure there's no compete, right? So it makes it more likely they're going to pay for this. Well, at the end of that, I have my book sales and then I have people asking me about speaking engagements. So your, your book release, for me, it needs to be a strategic release. And that's something that I'm always pushing, strategic release. And it's going to launch you into more than just, you just published a book. Mm -hmm. You're an author. You are an author with over seven streams mm. attached. So get ready to walk in that. You're crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know how many people I know over the last five, 10 years that have released books and did not throw a party? It was just like, they just, you know, I don't know how they got the book published, but they got it published. And then they just, you know, sent out some emails, did some postings. Maybe, maybe they showed up at a couple bookstores, you know, uh, for some signings, but no one turned it into an actual event. Wow. That is like amazing. But that doesn't <laughs> surprise me because as an author, especially, yes, you're willing to share your stories and push these up. But when I think of an author, I think of a private person. I think of someone who's a little more isolated sometimes, not all, right? But I think like the default right, is an author, they want to write, they don't want to perform, they don't want to, like, and they might not, right, so I think that what you do, Latrice, is, like, so valuable and important to help these authors understand that they're not just writing a book, they're creating a business from this book, they're creating yes. a livelihood for this book, from this book. Absolutely, yeah, and I, and I, I just uh, piggyback on that, you know, I'm, I'm, I come from entertainment, so when you talk about releasing product, I, it just, you know, takes me back to releasing, you know, music. Um, and then even then, you know, managing artists and, and having to teach them similar to what you're saying about having multiple streams of revenue. There was a moment in time where you couldn't all just sing a song. You couldn't be just the singer. You had to produce, you had to write, you had to act, you had to, that became, this is now the norm. 
having right. multifaceted ways of making money. And it sounds like very similar to what you're teaching, you know, your students. It's like, you can't just write a book. That's not the end all to end all because you're going to be poor um, and nobody's going to see your book. So having all of these different ways to market and to, you know, bring in the dollar is so important. So my hat is off to you. Thank you. And, and keep in mind, you don't have to do it all. Like I, I do right. tell my people that I work with, you don't have to do it all. You're the visionary of it, but you don't have to do it all. I didn't act out any of the characters in, in the book, <laughs> but I hire people to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can see the vision and write it out, make it plain for somebody else to run with it. It's okay to do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to turn your book into a play, hire a playwright. If you want to turn that book into a movie, which is another app, another revenue stream, hire somebody that can do that. Right. And then just have your book plugged in there. So it comes back to book sales, but at the same time, you got a movie out. <laughs> well, but I like what you're talking about too, is you know, you said something to me, the of course caught my attention. I start zeroing in with spits, right? Of course. Yeah. And you're talking about how in just the process alone you can recoup your expenses. Yes. Right. So I guess the question I would pose to you is, of course, you have some individuals, they made smart decisions. They may have 15, 20 K and a 401 K. Maybe they've already set up a business savings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of people who are going to be bootstrapped, right? So they're going to pay you this, this fee. Uh, and that's probably, that's, that's the extent of their investment or that they plan to invest, right? right. Um, so they're bootstrapping in this process. Um, it sounds like to me, you're setting up situations where they can be already monetizing their process. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. So the person that pays their 3000 or four or six or eight, whatever it is for your program, mm -hmm. and you know they're sitting up strapped, right? But they're committed to this process, you know, they're doing this book, they're going to matriculate through whatever system you have in place. How are you helping people monetize along the way? I know you mentioned the events, but what are some of the other things that they're doing? Well, some of the other things they're doing is they're doing pre-book sales. So before the book is even released, we're putting teasers out. You know, we'll look in the book and find one of the most action-packed statements you have in there. And you'll uh. put part of it and put dot, 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 purchase the book to find out what, what else happened. Like, <laughs> you're causing people to desire to know what happened in the book. So they want to purchase the book, right? So we're doing pre-book sales. That's the way you're bringing even, uh, revenue in. You're also making sure you have product connected to that book where you can bring revenue in that way. You know, um, I did do some t-shirts. Like for my other book, Fruit Circle, I had t-shirt sales. So you can put a design on a shirt that's related to your book, put it on you, take a picture. Mm -hmm. Wear a selfie. It's selfie land, right? <laughs> <laughs> Take a okay. picture of yourself. Look, rocking my new new circle T-shirt. You know, <laughs> if you want it, inbox me or you know something like that. Just have fun. I tell people when you're talking about releasing this book, it took a lot to get that book out. Now it's time to have fun. Hmm. Let's have fun and, uh, and allow people to join you and having fun with you. You know, hmm. you can. Another thing that we've done is. We've had uh, videos where I'm interviewing one of the people or something like that, and they're talking about their book, and then now other people are, what, they put it on their site, and then they ask 10 other people to share it to their page at the same time so that you get multiple audiences looking at <laughs> information about your book at one time. So we're doing a lot of different things to build mm -hmm. before that long. So the other thing I like about this is the person doesn't even have to play the Amazon game because you've already built in ways to monetize the book is not relying upon them simply getting people acquiring and acquiring and, and buying the book via Amazon. They've already begun the monetization process. Right. So by matriculating through this process, they probably already earned more money than 90% of people who publish books anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, this is hot. I like this. All right. But I still want to know how, and I guess it also my second question, right? Because the other thing is, okay, so how do you use Amazon to your benefit if that's the way you choose to go? But for me, like, I don't, I don't rely on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where most of my business comes from, but I don't rely on LinkedIn. I don't own that real estate. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I don't rely on Facebook for anything. I never did play well on Facebook, so that's whatever. Um, I, I try not, I try to avoid social media platforms being the means in which I sell. I want to bring people back to my blog. I want to bring people back to my site. Mm-hmm. So I know there's a mindset that you use Amazon. That's where you get your sales, you know, get your residuals and all that fun stuff. But I know there's another tactic that people employ where they say, well, no, I'm not going to have most of my sales come from Amazon. I'm going to create my own real estate, my own space mm-hmm. to sell my books. Like, I want to hear your experience, what your thoughts are on that. My thoughts about that is you can use the other one to build, but neither of these things can you depend on. (laughs) I like it. You can't depend on either platform. You have to make sure that you're putting your eggs in more than just one basket. Mm -hmm. If we're really going to step out there, then see it almost like the stock market. Sometimes things go up. Sometimes things go down. If it goes up, wonderful. If it goes down, I need to invest a little more, right? So when you're looking at your book, you're seeing it like the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you have more than one egg somewhere. Even your own, because I've had some people where they had their own site and when their site went down because they didn't promote anywhere else, now you don't have any book sales. You don't have anything else going on because that's all you depended on. Yeah. So make sure you lose it, use all your avenues. Okay. All right. So I was listening to some author. Was it Oliver Stone? It might have been Oliver Stone. I was listening to an interview from him. Um, and he talked about the fact that the majority of books that he's written have never go to press because most of them suck. Mm. So he's written all these books. And I've heard this from more than one author say this, that they're writing books and writing books and writing books. And they're almost like in the process of writing books until they write a good one, right? So it's just an exercise of it, right? Someone matriculates through the process, they write a book and it falls flat for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's gotta be, like you said, huge expenditure of energy, effort, and all that fun it stuff. Is. And then you don't get the results you're looking for. It What's is. the next step? Pick up and start over. Pick up and start over. Somebody launches a business and it falls flat. Do you just quit and say, I'm not an entrepreneur? Mm-hmm. Or does something in, in you internally says, it's got to be something else. There's another problem I have a solution for that I can tap into. It happens to the best of us. When you mm-hmm. think about, what is it? Uh, uh, Rawling, I can't think of the first two initials right now, but. RW. Yes. 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 She wrote, uh, it was ridiculous how many no's she got before she got that final yes. You know, yeah. how many failures were in there. But a lot of times after the, I think it was like 12, but after the first failure, people quit. But that's yep. not the time to quit. Keep going. Somebody else will give you a yes. So mm-hmm. if you publish this book and it flopped the first time, learn from it together. Yeah. That's what people don't do. Go back and analyze what happened. Why did it flop? And what can I do with the next? Because I'm not quitting. There's too much involved. I can't quit. So what can I do with the next to safeguard myself from that failure? Mm. So, so I, I try to, when I'm working with entrepreneurs and my sales team, I try to also teach them, these are things you don't do, Right. Because sometimes it's the things that you don't do that will actually determine success more things, more so things that you do, right? Absolutely. What are like some common mistakes that people make when they're publishing books that just, it's almost like it, it turns their whole endeavor into a loser seeking missile. Like it's going to guarantee that you are going to catch that hell. Right. What is <laughs> what are some of the mistakes that people make in the publishing process that just torpedoes their thing? Yeah. Some of the mistakes that I've seen is having a know-it-all mentality. Mm. Major mistake. I, because this is your first book. You clear you don't know it all. <laughs> There's somebody that has been where you are and I've spoken to people and they didn't, oh, no, no, I think it's this way, it's better, right? You, you agree? No, I don't agree. 
I don't agree, <laughs> but that way it's better because I know what's about to happen to you when you do that. <laughs> but because you're going to argue with me, I'm going to tell you, go for it. <laughs> and then you come back, you mad at me. And I'm like, well, I, I told you that I didn't agree. <laughs> so it's that, that type of thing. Um, that's one of the major. The second thing that I've seen is people with their social media, if you on your social media and it's just simply for you to be social and all that stuff, understand that other people are looking at you as an entrepreneur. They, they are looking at you as that author. So if you're cussing everybody out every day, you know, family don't support me, nobody support me. And then you I buy my book. No, <laughs> I'm not about to buy that book. Because I don't know what else is going to be in this book. You spend too much venom. I got to protect myself. I don't know what else is in this book, right? So your image and social media is still important. A lot of times people don't think it is, but it is. Even employers go to your social media before you get the job. <laughs> so making sure your social media reflects what you desire to reflect about you in your business or being an entrepreneur. So make sure you're doing that. Um, that's the second major one that I've seen. And the third one is just not, not enlisting the help of others. Major flop. When we decided we were going to take Faith, Failure, Success, Surviving the Storm and launch out, right? And that's one of the ones that went bestseller. When we decided to do that with that book. And this is, this is people, sometimes people are afraid of joining with others and releasing a book. That's a big mistake. <laughs> It's okay if it's your first book and you just got a chapter in this book. That's perfectly fine. Because guess what? It's six authors in that book. And all six authors have different platforms. They're all promoting on their platform. And now you've, you've maximized your reach. And each of those six authors in that book that are promoting, they have asked 10 other people, 10 family members and friends, to share their posts on their page or allow them to tag them in the post. So that now, not only is it on their page, but it's on 10 other people's pages attached to six different people. You increased your platform. So failing to yoke up with others is a big mistake. Having your social media look a mess, you know, we're just spewing out your attitude on a daily basis. That's a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> And being closed off to wisdom is a huge mistake. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're getting we're getting towards that here, and, and you've just given so many right. amazing takeaways that I can't wait to make a bunch of little sound clips from. Um, but if there was one very important lesson that you wanted to leave our listening audience with regarding publishing, motivation, entrepreneurship in general, what would that be? You have to see beyond the present. Sometimes we get stuck in the present and we can't see greater. When you're in the midst of writing and it could get really hard, but you need to have an end goal in mind. And for me, it was envisioning the person that's going to read this book. Because I'm not writing for the sake of writing. I'm writing with a purpose. If I'm writing about my story, that I want to help that person that's where I am at that moment. I want to help that person either where I am or where I've been. I want to help that person. And if you see it that way, you're more likely to finish the process because you have a very important goal that's important to you that you're pursuing. And if you pursue that goal and you see beyond just that one, the goal is to reach that one person, but knowing that one person is attached to millions of other people, let's just be real even in your own family network you got more than 50 cousins like more than 50 more than 50 relatives so that one person is not just an anomaly mm. so see beyond what's present and move forward mm. it's amazing uh latrice maybe you can give us some uh i want to <laughs> In your own words, I was hoping you can give us some maybe teasers of what's coming up for you, but also how can people learn more about uh, working with you and, or, you know, and finding more about you about what you're going to have in the future for us. I'll give you a teaser that's coming up. I am getting ready to publish the book called Burning the Help. Hmm. How many of you have had someone say, I don't know why people won't watch my kids for me. They really don't know the answer to that. 
this book is actually a fictional book, but it's based on some real experiences that I've had. So I completely changed characters and things around in this book, but it's designed to answer that question and also provide resources for the person that has burned out their support network. And now they're making some changes in their life and they desire to have more help, right? So this book is for that person. Definitely, if you're looking to get help and mindset coaching and you want to release your book, you can either email me at Latresa Rice at royalclarityview.com, call me at uh, 586-413-7158, or I'm on all things social media at Latresa Rice. That, <laughs> I'm on Goodreads, I'm on all things at Latresa Rice, so you can find me. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Well, thank you, Latresa, for joining us. We're going to put her email, phone number, and all those links in our show notes okay. so that you can connect with her further. And we will be continuing this conversation inside our next social after show group on Facebook. We invite anyone there watching to join us so we can we can talk more about Latrice and share some of her stuff in there as well. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button here on YouTube or visit our website at nextupsocial.com to learn more about what we do. And if you love today's episode with Latrice, like we already have, we encourage you to share it with someone so they can gain value as well. So thank you, Latrice. So we appreciate you joining us again. Thank you for having me.